Congratulations on the birth of your baby. This is a very special time for you and your family. The following video will provide important information about how to care for yourself and your baby during your stay in the rotunda. We hope that it will assist you in gaining the confidence to care for yourself and your baby at home. You will be discharged by a midwife prior to going home and you may also need to be reviewed by a doctor. Your midwife will advise you about this. Your baby will be reviewed and discharged by a paediatrician and you will be given any necessary appointments. Please ensure that your midwife has your correct home address and contact numbers. Your expected time of discharge is 11 a.m. unless otherwise indicated by your midwife. We would ask that you please arrange to be picked up by this time. After birth of your baby, you will have period-like bleeding as the uterus sheds its lining. The bleeding is known as lochia. The bleeding can be heavy for first few days. Slowly, it will turn pink and then brown over the following weeks. It usually stops within four to six weeks. If your bleeding becomes heavier after being discharged home, or if you are soaking more than one pad per hour, or passing multiple cloths the size of two euro coin, please contact emergency room for assessment. Change pads every three to four hours for the first week and shower at least daily to prevent infections. It's normal to feel very tired after having a baby. Ensure you take every opportunity to rest and sleep while your baby is sleeping. Include plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables to help prevent constipation and plenty of iron and protein rich food to aid cell repair and the production of breast milk. Drink water regularly to stay hydrated. Slimming diets should be avoided, especially if breastfeeding. You will need extra calories and it is okay to consume all type of food in moderation. Keep small snacks and water to consume between meals, especially if your regular meal are going to be delayed. If you have had a tear or episiotomy and have had stitches, it is normal to feel sore and uncomfortable in the early days. Painkillers and ice packs can help. The stitches will take up to two weeks to dissolve. It is important to avoid constipation. Drink plenty of water or clear fluids to keep your urine dilated. Use non-perfume soap or plain water to clean where the stitches are. Sitting in warm baths for 10 minutes can help to ease any discomfort. It is best to use plain water and only take very short baths. Do not use any type of salts or disinfectants in your bath. It can take longer to recover after a cesarean section. The midwife will check your wound daily. You will have a waterproof dressing covering your wound for the first three days. Your midwife will advise you on when this needs to be removed. On day five, if you have clips or beads, these will be removed by your midwife in hospital, by the community midwives, or by your public health nurse if you are at home. Sometimes soluble sutures are used and these do not need to be removed. If a special dressing called a pico dressing is used, this dressing will stay in place for seven days and will be removed by your public health nurse or you may be asked to return to the hospital to have it removed. It is important to avoid overstretching, lifting anything heavier than your baby and tasks such as vacuuming for six weeks following a caesarean section. We advise to avoid driving but check with your doctor or insurance company for their recommendations. On discharge, you will either be advised to buy medications without prescription in your local pharmacy or you'll be given a prescription for pain medication. Pain can be much harder to control if you let it build up, so please take your medication regularly as recommended on discharge. Paracetamol is a very effective pain medication, which also reduces fever and inflammation. Anti-inflammatories, including ibuprofen and diclofenac, will help reduce levels of chemicals in your body that can cause inflammation and pain. Never take ibuprofen and diclofenac together. Eating a well-balanced diet with adequate fibre and fluids will help prevent constipation and will make bowel movements more comfortable, especially if you have hemorrhoids. There are several medications available for constipation and hemorrhoids. Get advice from your pharmacist for the most suitable product. Empty your bladder regularly. If you have any leakage from your bowel or bladder, please inform your midwife. 
or if at home, please contact the physiotherapy department for advice. You will be seen by a physiotherapist during your stay in the rotunda who will discuss pelvic floor exercises. If you have not seen a physiotherapist before discharge, please ask your midwife for information. Your hands and feet might be swollen after your baby is born. This is due to the excess fluid present in your body following the delivery. It should resolve in seven to 10 days. Elevate your feet while lying or sitting and rotate your wrists and ankles every now and then to encourage drainage of fluid. Remove any tight rings. Ensure that you are adequately hydrated and that you mobilize every few hours to improve circulation and prevent blood clots. If the swelling doesn't subside and you begin to experience pain or chest discomfort, please seek immediate medical advice. If you are breastfeeding, make sure you shower daily and change your bra when necessary. Change your breast pads regularly once they are soaked. If your nipples are tender, apply a few drops of breast milk and allow it to air dry. If your breasts become engorged, apply warm compresses, massage the breasts to soften the areola, latch the baby to the breast and then use cold compresses between feeds. If you are not breastfeeding, avoid handling the breasts and do not try to express milk. Have your back to the running water while showering to avoid stimulating your breasts and wear a well-fitting bra for support. Ice packs and cold cabbage leaves can be used to help relieve discomfort from engorgement. Non-breastfeeding engorgement should subside in 24 to 36 hours. It is important to remember that it is possible to become pregnant again soon after childbirth. You ovulate or release eggs about two weeks before your period arrives. You can start having sex again as soon as you feel ready, but ensure that you use barrier methods to avoid becoming pregnant again straight away. There is a risk of pregnancy even if you are breastfeeding. Talk to your partner about which method of contraception is right for you. Please try to keep up to date with your smear tests. Cervical Check provides free screening to women in Ireland. Please visit cervicalcheck.ie to check when your next smear test is due. When discharged home, if you develop a high temperature, which is over 38 degrees, or a very low temperature, less than 36 degrees, chills, shivering, a fast heartbeat or breathing, breathlessness, headache, severe abdominal pain or extreme sleepiness, please seek medical advice. These could be early warning signs of sepsis and you should seek immediate advice from your GP or maternity hospital. Rapid changes in your hormone levels after birth combined with lack of sleep can bring mixed feelings and emotions called baby blues. Many women, possibly up to 80%, will experience the baby blues or postnatal blues in the first few days after delivery. You may feel cheerful, emotional and overwhelmed. Blues are very normal, usually happen on the second or third day. For some women, the blues can last for a week or so. This is temporary and will pass. Try to sleep when your baby sleeps, as being too tired can make this feeling worse. By the time your baby is two weeks old, the blues should have resolved. Following discharge, if you have any concerns or questions regarding your delivery experience, you can contact our Birth Reflections team on birthreflections at rotunda.ie. Mental health issues can present at any time in the first year after delivery. If you have a history of depression or an anxiety disorder, panic disorder, eating disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, or if you have experienced a traumatic birth, this might make you more at risk of developing a perinatal mental health problem. It's not unusual to feel sad, anxious or overwhelmed for a few days, but if you have symptoms of low mood or persistent anxiety lasting longer than two weeks, you should link in with the mental health midwives in the rotunda or with your GP or public health nurse. Early intervention is important. We know that if you ask for help early, it can reduce the duration of illness and help you to recover quicker. Extra support can help, as well as accepting help from loved ones, taking naps where you can, eating a good diet and exercising regularly. Before going home, make sure you know how to change nappy and how to attend your baby's hygiene needs. 
Staff will be happy to show you how to care for your baby. Wash your hands before handling or feeding your baby and after changing the nappy. This applies to anyone who will be coming into contact with your baby. Encourage visitors to keep handling of your baby to a minimum and discourage visitors from kissing your baby to prevent transmission of infection, including cold sores. If you are a smoker, it's extremely important that you never smoke around your baby. If you smoke, do not handle your baby until you have washed your hands and changed your clothes. These rules apply to family, friends who are visiting. During pregnancy and after the birth of your baby are the good times to consider quitting. Your midwife can share resources with you. Do not share your bed with your baby, especially when extremely tired and going to sleep. When you have taken medication that makes you drowsy or when you have consumed alcohol or drugs. Never sleep with your baby on sofa or armchair for safety reasons. Car seats should only be used for a limited period of time. If your journey will be longer than 19 minutes, stop for a break and take your baby out of the car seat. Always place the baby flat on their back when going to sleep. Place your baby's feet to the bottom end of the car. Tuck the sheets and the blankets in to secure them. Placing two cellular blankets across the chest, leaving the baby's hands free. Ensure you remove all bibs, hoodies or cardigans before putting the baby to bed. Keep the cot free from toys and loose bedding and avoid using baby pillows. Baby's temperature can be checked by touching the chest. If your baby feels too harsh or too cold and you're concerned, you can use a digital thermometer to check the temperature. Your baby's temperature should be between 36.5 to 37.4 degrees Celsius. The room temperature should be between 16 to 20 degrees Celsius. Do not place your baby close to the radiators. When dressing your baby, always have the following layers, vest, baby crow, and two cellular blankets folded which makes four layers. Cardigans can be used when it's very cold outside. Hats are not needed indoors. Your baby will have the first bath on day two. You don't have to bathe your baby every day. Once or twice a week is sufficient. For the first bath at home, you will need someone to help. A bath demonstration will be given to you by your midwife before you leave the hospital. Have everything ready before you start. Never leave your baby alone or unsupported in the bath. The water should be body temperature between 37 and 38 degrees Celsius. Check the temperature with your elbow or with a bath thermometer. Dress your baby with clean clothes and a clean nappy. Usually babies feel very relaxed after a bath and have a good sleep. There is no need to clean your baby's cord with wipes. Make sure the cord is kept dry and outside the nappy. Once your baby has had the first bath, wait until the cord falls off to do the next one. Keep an eye on the cord for signs of infection such as redness around the cord, oozing or an unpleasant smell. The cord will fall off within a week. Jaundice is a common and usually harmless part of newborn life. It happens as the extra red blood cells are broken down in your baby's body, causing the skin and sometimes the white of the eyes to turn yellow. Your midwife or community midwife and public health nurse will keep an eye on your baby's jaundice levels. Sometimes babies need a blood test to check jaundice levels while you're in hospital. You may be asked to return to hospital to have this test repeated. Jaundice can make your baby very sleepy, so it is important to feed your baby regularly to help flush the jaundice out. Once you are discharged home, if your baby looks very yellow, is not alert, not looking for feeds and not having wet or dirty nappies, then you should return to the hospital to have your baby reviewed. Your baby will have the newborn blood spot screening or the heel prick test between 72 and 120 hours of age. This tests for various metabolic disorders, congenital hypothyroidism and cystic fibrosis. If this test is not done while you're in hospital, your midwife will make arrangements for it to be done at home 
with a public health nurse or in the paediatric outpatient department. It is important for your baby to be vaccinated. You will receive an information booklet before you are discharged. It is also recommended for all babies to be supplemented with vitamin D. You will receive information about this prior to discharge. You will be offered a hearing screen for your baby on the day of discharge. This test may need to be repeated due to an unclear response. An unclear response does not always mean that there is hearing loss. It may be due to background noise, fluid in the ear, or if your baby is unsettled during screening. Ensure that you have smoke and carbon monoxide alarms fitted, that they are in working order, and that you test them once a month in order to keep yourself and your family safe. If you have any questions before you are discharged home, please ask your midwife.